Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and if I were to express my excitement, it's really uh, this guy. This guy is right about at my level right now because I'm super excited about this new feature coming to Fantastical. Today, it should be out as you're seeing this video, and it's called Fantastical Openings. And basically what this feature is, is a way for people to schedule time with you, but it's done in a really great Fantastical-centric way. And so this is going to remove the need for you to use a third-party service um, in addition to Fantastical when getting people to schedule time with you to meet up for whatever. So I'm going to just jump into the demo. I did want to say before the demo, I have worked with Fantastical before. We've worked together on some video stuff for their website. I've never done sponsored content on this channel, though, for them. And I'm not being paid to do this. I don't have to do this video. I'm doing it because I'm genuinely excited about it. So let's jump into the demo of what you get with this feature. Okay, so we're on the Mac now, and I want to just show you how this works here. Um, basically, Fantastical is just like it's always been. Uh, but if I go into my app preferences, you'll see it's been the layout's been changed a little bit it used to be tabs on the top. Now it's more like the system preferences app. Um, but I see this new option for openings. So if I go in here, it's off by default. So it's definitely important to know it's off by default. Flexibits isn't opting you into this if you don't want to use it. Um, but if you do want to use it, you can go ahead and enable openings. And then the only option here that you can set in the app is your calendar set. And so basically the system is going to use whatever calendar set you have selected as your available as your actual availability. So I'm going to select uh, the demo calendar set that I have here because um, that's going to be useful for our purposes uh, in this video. Um, so we'll go ahead and set that. And that's it. Um, you can click in here to see kind of the privacy policy for uh, this feature. Um, it's very, very short here. Um, one of the nice things is that all of the stuff happens in Fantastical servers. Um, it's not giving anyone access to your calendar. It's not giving a third party service um, for like scheduling these things. It's not giving another company your uh, calendar info, which is kind of a holdup for a lot of people in corporate environments where they uh, just need security to approve different uh, services to use their like Google Calendar account and everything. Anyway, it's really nice. If you already can use Fantastical, it's likely that this is totally acceptable as well because it's all running through Fantastical. Um, but we're going to go to Manage Openings. And what you're going to see is I've actually already made a template, um, but I'm going to delete this one. So we're going to start fresh. So you can go ahead and create a new meeting template. You'll notice this is just on flexibits.com and it's kind of in your account settings and there's a new section for openings. Um, and so what you can do is we want to create a new meeting. So we'll do uh, meeting with Matt, uh, discuss ABC projects, right? So this is going to be a, a generic link that I just send out to people um, whenever I want. Um, you can set what calendar it'll put the event on once it's done or once it's created. So I'm going to go ahead and select meetings. And then you can create a custom link. So you have like kind of your username and then meeting with Matt. Um, we'll just call this uh, meet with me. It doesn't really matter, um, but that's what the link's going to be. So you can set your availability. Um, so what's the availability? I want these meetings to be 30 minutes. I don't want them to be a full hour. Um, I'm going to set all my availability based on central time. And let's say I want my meetings to be on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, I don't want to do them on Mondays or Fridays. And I actually don't want to do meetings up until five. Let me do them up until four. I don't want to end my day with a meeting if I don't have to. So here's my availability, nine to four, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and only let people set them 14 days ahead. Let's not set things too far in the future because people forget and it's a whole thing. But one important thing to remember is back in the app, we gave it a calendar set. So we gave it this calendar set, which we're looking at right here. So it's not going to just make every time from nine to five available. It's going to look at these calendars and only give me those times. So we're going to do that. Um, and then approval, I can automatically approve the meetings when people request them, or I can manually approve. I'm going to manually approve just so you can kind of see how that works. So we're going to save the changes. Here it is. And now I'm just going to copy the link and I can actually just get out of here. And now let's pretend we're another user getting this link. I just received this in an email. I want to click it. And here's what I'm presented with. And so it's a really clean interface. It's really, I mean, what you'd expect from Fantastic Hal. For my money, it's the best uh, web interface for someone receiving one of these. I think it's really clear what's going on. I can just click on a date and see um, what's available. And yeah, so let's say I want to pick a time. Hmm. Okay. Um, all these times are available. Uh, you'll see these match up. Like Wednesday, there's not a lot of time. I have 10.30, 3, and 3.30. And if I go to Fantastic Cal, it's like, oh yeah, between those hours, 10.30 and 3 to 3.30 um, are the only ones available. So let's say I actually have a fourth meeting here that's added. So let me just duplicate one there. So now that 10.30 is gone. 
immediately the web interface is updated and I only have three and 3.30 um, on that day. So let me actually select that time. So we'll do 3.30, give us your name, uh, John Doe, and we'll do, oops, there we go. Um, so we'll just say, yeah, John Doe, and then here's my email and request the meeting, right? Cool. Um, it's let me go ahead and do that. Um, I should also say on all these pages, you've been able to um, adjust the time zone. So I think it detects based on your locale uh, what your time zone is, um, but you can set it to different ones if you'd like um, to do different ones. But yeah, your time is not yet confirmed. You'll receive a follow up email. So I already have the email that's from Fantastical saying you've requested a meeting. He's going to um, approve it and you can hit this to change some of the details about your request at any point. So let's hop over back to Fantastical and for whatever reason, it doesn't always come up right away. Um, this might just be a beta thing, probably is just a beta thing, but I've had to kind of uh, do a reboot of the app to actually have requested one show up here. So you can see requested is here at 3.30 and I can double click it and I can accept or decline. I can also do it from up here. All this works on mobile as well. Um, so the iPhone app, the iPad app and the Mac app all support this. And so, yeah, I can just say um, accept or decline. I'm going to accept it, sure. So there we go. So it's going to shift from requested to scheduled. And you can see, there we go, it's scheduled. And if I go back to um, Outlook to see this, I have an email that's saying, hey, uh, you've been invited to this meeting at that time and everything. Um, and I can just go ahead and accept it from here. So that's kind of the experience from both ends. It's a really, it's a really great feature. I'm really excited about it. I'm really happy that it's built into Fantastic Hell and I don't have to use a third party client that is also going to have a monthly subscription that I have to pay for, right? Like I use, I, I don't want to say the name because I'm not going to, I'm not trying to take anyone like down a peg or anything in this video, but I used a service for this uh, recently and it was more expensive to use that service than to use Fantastic Hell. So um, yeah, if you have a Fantastic Hell subscription, you get this for free. If you don't have a Fantastic Hell subscription, this might be a reason for you to uh, want to jump in. But yeah, I think it's really nice. It has a good experience for people on both ends. Uh, it works across all the devices that Fantastic Hell supports. And yeah, it's really privacy focused, which is always great um, to see. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you here next time. Bye bye.